Sato ma sadgamaya tamaso ma jyotagamaya mrityo rama mrityangamaya Om Shanti 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 let us bow down to Sri Ramakrishna, the embodiment of all religions, the Supreme God incarnate. Let us pray to Him to lead us from the unreal to the real, to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge, to lead us from death to immortality. Today's topic, Moral Development and Spiritual Knowledge. Both are very essential for the life. Without moral development and spiritual knowledge, there is no success in life. If a person is aspiring for peace and happiness, one has to give attention to moral development and also spiritual knowledge. They are of supreme importance. Since we are not paying as much attention as it should be done, we are facing lots of sufferings and unhappiness in the life. If you are well rooted in moral principles, if you have sound philosophy, as a background, then your life will be successful. There is inseparable connection between moral life and spiritual knowledge. So, when you have both these fully developed in yourself, then you acquire complete fulfillment, complete fulfillment in life you will get. So moral development and spiritual knowledge are both very important to get into the experience of real peace and real joy. The whole life will be a life of happiness if you are well rooted in moral principles. We are all working in some way or other in this world. No one at any time is there without doing any work. Everyone will have to work and he will be doing some sort of work. Lord Krishna himself tells in the Karma Yoga, I also keep working all the time. If I stop working for a moment, then it will have very disastrous effect. So, in a way, work is a boon. Without work, 
man would become idle and idle man's mind is devil's workshop it is rather good to be doing some work rather than sitting idle but then there are so many attitudes while doing work we do work for some interest first of all we keep engaging ourselves in so many varieties of work so that uh, we get some monetary benefit so we have got some vested interest selfish interest forces us or urges us into some activity all the time all the day some motivation is there without that man cannot work well <clears throat> but there are people who not simply work for themselves but who work for others doing work for oneself no doubt one gets joy you earn money that way you feel happy but doing work for others also you will get happiness but that is of different type that happiness which you get in serving others it uplifts you you feel a kind of satisfaction in yourself and a sense of contentment and you feel like doing something more for others that means the inherent quality of love in the heart expresses itself in such ways so love or just the man to help others for doing good to others there are so many ways of doing good in fact uh, in our hindu scriptures which are well defined in all aspects of life they say doing good to the world has been classified into four groups one is annadana giving food giving food to others you feel a kind of joy that's why you find in our hindu tradition almost every day there will be some activity in the home some spiritual activity so that somehow or other you are made to think of god you are made to learn sacrifice you are made to express your inherent love in so many ways so naturally any function or program any spiritual activity in the home is followed by feeding the people to give one example you know particularly in our ramkrishna mission centers we do ram naam sankirtan and shiv naam sankirtan bhajans special worship on special days and all these days we are very particular to give prasad to everyone who participates in that activity giving food to the people that is the complete uh, it gives the fulfillment of satisfaction and that only makes your action complete so any activity must be followed up by feeding the people so there's a joy in feeding them there's no doubt joy in feeding ourselves in feeding our own family our own kith and kin but there is special joy in feeding others so supplying the needy with all the material necessities such as food shelter clothing and whatever 
help that is required for the person. That's very good. In fact, I still remember uh, in India when I was living in the home, I myself would see weekly twice about three to four students would come. Those students were poor, they were seeking some kind of help and they would fix up the days in many houses. Monday is one home, Tuesday is another home, Wednesday is another home. Like that they would cover up all the seven days in a week. So, and the home, the family, they would be happy to share food with the students who are aspiring to uh, acquire knowledge. So it was considered very meritorious and most of the families would agree to share the food for those who want. So giving food is considered one of the good ways of helping the people. Then second one is giving life that means rescuing a person from emergencies for example giving medical help suppose a man is urgently in need of something otherwise he would collapse at that point if you go and render a help that's the greatest help in this connection I want to tell one incident which happened in Bangalore where I was living in the Ramakrishna mission there was a very good devotee of very high class type and every weekend he would come to the ashram he had a small business so weekdays he could not come but weekend he would come he would come and offer prayers sit sit in for meditation for a few minutes. So every year during the Deepavali festival he would bring lot of fireworks because we had children section every day about 70 to 80 children would come to get uh, training in the ashram. They would be taught bhajans and they would be taught how to serve. In so many ways, they were uh, being given education in the ashram. And those little kids, from the beginning they would have that holy association. They would be always in the ashram atmosphere and singing about God and thinking about spiritual ideas. In so many ways, the boys would be benefited. And this particular devotee was very happy and he would bring fireworks one Sunday following the Deepavali festival. All the children would be happy to witness that. And that would be done in our ashrama grounds. We we had 22 acres of land. So, I am just giving the background of that devotee, how he was Uh, joyful in uh, giving things and not only that he would say Swamiji whenever you need a car for going somewhere you please give me a call I will send the car because at that time we had no car in the ashram many times we would have to go outside and suppose we give a call to him he would say he would simply ask one question at what time you want the car suppose I say 2 o'clock at 2 o'clock car will be there. It doesn't matter whether his car would come or taxi will come or any other car would come. Car would be there. We are not to bother about it. Such a fine devotee. You know everybody would get disease sometime or other. Body is subject to disease. What of that? There is nothing great in that. <laughs> everybody has to get some disease in order to get out of the body. Otherwise the soul wants to remain in the body even, if, even after 100 years it wants to remain doesn't want to get out. So in a way, that invisible force, it pushes you out of the body. Get out. Your term is over. 
So sometimes you are made to think of these things. Going in a natural way is one thing and going in a forceful way is another thing. Anyway, this particular devotee was uh, very healthy but suddenly he found symptoms of sickness and nobody could find out what exactly he was suffering from but he was day by day he was going down, getting depressed. And uh, finally, the family people came to know what the disease that devotee was suffering from. But they were hesitating to tell the devotee because he may feel shocked. Anyway, it went on for a few months in that way and uh, we would be getting call and we would go and visit him and give some kind of consolation. And, but he was feeling very sad. Once a person from New York came to Bangalore and that person was our former student of the ashram. He was trained by us. He was staying in our ashram for about uh, starting from PUC level up to medical college, say about 8 to 10, 9 years. He had education in the ashram. So, that person had become expert. He is one of the experts even now in New York, medical doctor, uh, the urologist. So, when he came, whenever he would come to India, Bangalore, he would visit us. Then I told him, look, one devotee is there. He is suffering too much. We don't know why. Will you please go and check him? What is the matter? And he said, Yes, Swami, I will gladly do it. And he went. And he went and found out immediately that he was suffering from kidney problem. And he told the family people, Why do you keep it hiding? Tell him clearly so that he can take treatment. What is there? By hiding, you can't cure the disease or you can't make the patient happy. Uh, So, he nicely told the devotee, Well, your kidneys have been damaged. There is no anxiety. You don't have to worry about it. Come to America, we will transplant it. (laughs) Because both the kidneys had gone. Now at least he knew what was the effect. Then who will give the kidney? It is not easy to get proper kidney. There are so many varieties, pink kidney, pink color, etc. Anyway, so when the devotee came, the first thing was they test the relations. If the kidney of any of the relations is suitable, that is preferable. Luckily they found very close devotee, the relation of the devotee, had that proper kidney which he could donate to this person. Everyone has got two kidneys, you know. One can live on one kidney. God has provided. See how God is gracious. He has given two kidneys. If one kidney fails, let him live on through another kidney. If you think of God like this, the whole life is full of God's grace only. (laughs) Anyway, to understand that, you have to have some kind of awakening in yourself. A spiritual awakening is required to realize the grace of God. Anyway, look at that relation, very close related. He was, he was ready to sacrifice. He was ready to, well, take off my kidney. Let that person live. That is called giving life. Rescuing a person in emergency. A person is in badly need of a thing. At that point you help him. That's a tremendous help. Tremendous good you are doing. So that is the second category. The third category, educational help. If you render a help to a person to educate himself, what a great help it is. Later on, that person would be able to stand on his own legs. So, that's a great help, giving education. Vidyadana. 
Now, this help, giving education, leads to two distinct results. One is intellectual development and moral development. The fourth category, the highest one of all these categories, is spiritual knowledge. Giving spiritual knowledge is the highest, highest and the best. By making a person aware of his spiritual self and the essential unity of the spiritual life with the Supreme Being. So this Vedantic idea of oneness of reality giving that message to the person that is the highest act of doing good to the world. So Swami Vivekananda came to this country in order to give that highest spiritual knowledge that is Vedanta. He gave an awakening to the people at large through the people in America, to the whole world, Swami Vivekananda gave an awakening. Uttishtata Jagrata Prapyavaran Nibodhata. Arise, awake. Arise, awake and stop not till the goal is reached. The goal of oneness of spirituality, oneness of reality. Each soul is potentially divine. You are the divine. Because you are not aware of that, you are suffering and suffering. Suffering comes to end only when you realize your own true self. Until and unless you realize your true self, you will be undergoing some kind of suffering in one way or other. So, giving spiritual knowledge is the highest. So, these different forms of uh, service, they have relative importance. Giving a food that is supplying material needs, it is no doubt good. But comparatively speaking, it is the lowest of all the other three. Next to that is the ser- serving a person who is suffering from disease or who needs something to save his life. Above that is the giving of knowledge. That is to say, helping others in their intellectual and moral development. We can give food to a starving person but he will feel hungry again. Next day again he will come. Give me a dollar. I need food. Here we see many people coming. Every alternate day they come. They bang the door. So fast. You must run to open the door. If you run, you see this person. Give me a dollar for food. He will be asking for. But is he satisfied? You may give one dollar. Next day again he will come for asking. If you give him education, if you teach him how to earn money, how to take care of himself, then you render him a much more enduring service. So, giving education is considered to be superior to supplying a person with simply material needs. Now, giving education is superior even to giving life, sacrificing one's life. Because life becomes worth living only when a person has a true knowledge. Without it, a person can help neither himself nor others. Because we are not giving attention to this moral development and spiritual knowledge, you find tremendous increase of crime, and violence all over the world. All over the world. 
no army can stop no legislation can stop no government can stop none can stop none it's only through moral development and spiritual knowledge one can solve this problem of crime corruption violence and all such ills so giving education as i said earlier has a two fold purpose one is intellectual development and moral development according to hindu view moral development is more important than an intellectual develop a person may be intellectually great still he cannot be of much service to himself or to the world unless he is also morally developed a person can be helped physically but that does not do him any lasting good for that he must be helped morally there is a fine story which was said by one of our swamis there was a person he was arrested for committing burglary he was brought to the court and he was asked to make a statement then he made a statement he said i was born blind there was a generous person he came he cured me of my blindness when i was blind i lived on alms and begging now that i am not blind i am now that, now that i am not blind i don't know what i must do and what i must live on so i committed burglary so in this case you can't say that the curing of the blindness did the man much good because his moral nature remained what it was you can establish clinics for curing different kinds of diseases but still you can't guarantee good health unless you teach people to live with moderation following hygienic principles you can establish relief camps but if people don't know how to live properly relief camps will not help them to solve the problems of life it's all temporary you can develop machinery to solve the problem of want but if people are greedy and have insatiable sense desires the machinery will not solve the problem of want similarly you can make any number of peace treaties but if people do not follow moral principles if they do not have moral integrity peace treaties will not be worth the paper they are written on the good of the world depends very much on the moral goodness of human beings so the moral nature of a person must be strengthened and developed before a person is taught how to earn money in olden days means about at least 30 years back people no doubt would go for jobs and earn money but they were very honest truthful free from corruption they were contented duty conscious so it helped them to live in a peaceful way even though they didn't have all modern luxuries but still they were more happy than the people today with all these luxuries because of the moral nature which they developed in their life so the solution of material problems it depends wholly on the morality of people men and women but even superior to moral development is spiritual development which is totally neglected we are not giving any importance for our spiritual development we want to but we are not giving we are not acting upon in a proper way to develop our spiritual qualities 
by spiritual development is meant the development of the awareness of the spiritual self and its essential unity with the divine being this is superior because in this awareness is the real fulfillment of life no one can attain fulfillment merely through material development if you observe carefully you will see that no amount of material prosperity can solve the problem of life even on the moral plane you are in a state of conflict between the right and wrong our longing for life's fulfillment reaches its culmination in the attainment of spiritual freedom in the attainment of the knowledge of the supreme being the knowledge which completely removes all ignorance the knowledge having which there remains nothing more to know that by attaining which there remains nothing more to attain this inherent desire in the human heart for complete freedom and perfection is satisfied only through spiritual culture only through spiritual development therefore spiritual knowledge is considered to be the highest of all the other categories it goes beyond moral development not only that the basis of moral life is in spiritual consciousness you can't derive moral principles just from the consideration of material values spiritual life is necessary not only for the complete fulfillment of the self but also for the security and soundness of moral life that is to say material life is not secure without a moral basis and moral life is not secure without a spiritual basis even for the sake of intellectual life and national security a spiritual basis needed so the giving of spiritual knowledge is considered the great test service before doing good to the world we must see whether we are good ourselves a person who is not good or who doesn't least try to be good cannot do much good to the world there may be some subtle selfish desire within him if his mind is not pure if he is not honest he will of course work with a selfish motive in whatever situation he wants to do service to the world he will expect gratitude he will expect something in return he will work with the motive of gaining name and fame so this egoistic impulse will always be behind his work if he is not morally developed so due attention should be paid not only to our outer poverty which we are struggling to fight with but also to our inner poverty which we have neglected that is moral and spiritual a person may be very good in his own field for example a doctor he may be very learned in his field but if he is not honest his technical efficiency will not do much good to the world and even though he is a doctor he may abuse his uh, skill and uh, that way he may be contributing to the evil he will do some good perhaps but he will also do much harm the other day i was uh, reading in our chicago tribune on the front page there is a news item not chicago tribune some tribune maybe india tribune they there is a doctor who was billing for the dead patients and the federal authorities have discovered that and they are planning to prosecute him at least 50 to 70 dead patients he has made a bill for getting money so that means if a person is dishonest he will use his profession also in a bad way simply by being an expert in any practical field you can't do really good to the world 
You see, there are so many <coughs> charitable organizations. There are so many institutions all over the world. But if these organizations or institutions are not run by honest people who are well rooted in moral principles, then these very institutions become hotbeds of corruption. So that's why we find in so many cases how the bulk of the funds go for the benefit of the organizers while only it little trickles down to those for whom it is intended, the people at large. So it is essential that while we try to do good to the world, we should at the same time try to do good to ourselves by improving our inner nature, that is by making ourselves unselfish, unselfish. That's what Swami Vivekananda said when his Karma Yoga means Nishkam Karma Yoga, Nishkam Karma. The action which is done in a selfless way, selfless service, service. Sir, the idea of sir will come when you are humble, when you are free from ego. And seeing God, you, you feel revered, you feel the person with great honor and serve him. That way you develop your moral stature and spiritual quality. So service to the world, therefore, can be done with a twofold attitude. One is, you are improving the conditions of others in some way, and the other, you are improving your own nature. If you always think that the world needs our help to relieve suffering of those living in dire poverty and ignorance, the result is egoism will prevail with us. Pity or patronizing attitude will not help people morally. So, our spiritual masters say that while you do good to the world, do not think that others are in dire need of your help. You need the work for your own benefit. You must work with humility, with the attitude of service, because the giver of help is helped more than the receiver. Out of your work, you are deriving benefit which is superior to material benefit. You are purifying your mind. By feeding a person, or by clothing a person, or by giving a person a medical help, it is you who are receiving great benefit if you utilize the opportunity in the right way. So, you have every reason to be more thankful than the people you serve. With this attitude you should approach this world. Then you will see how you really experience the meaning of happiness and peace. You must realize that the receiver is giving you more benefit than what he is himself receiving. Instead of expecting gratitude of the people you serve, always be grateful to them for giving you the privilege of serving. Not even for a moment must you forget this. If you forget it, you are the loser. If you spend money on food to give to a person and give it with a patronizing attitude, what will happen? You will lose both your money as well as your moral and spiritual benefit to yourself. You are the double loser. On the other hand, if you give money with the attitude of service and humility, you are benefited morally and this gain is greater than material gain. So open your heart, open your heart. Give whatever you give with the proper attitude. It will not then humiliate the receiver. At the same time, it will elevate you morally and spiritually. In this context again I will uh, tell you how we were uh, running a student's home in Bangalore, again I am speaking about, we had about 100 students, all college going, uh, young, energetic, uh, intelligent boys. Among them, there were many, many very poor students. Poor means they don't have any shelter, but they have come for higher studies. 
So we have to provide them everything. Shelter, food, atmosphere, discipline, everything we have to provide. And but then only we know who are the poor among the students. The students themselves don't know who is poor and who is not poor. Because again that will create inferiority and co- complex there. Oh, because he is, I am poor, I am ill-treated. Because he is financially good, he is uh, benefited in so many ways. This kind of uh, conflict, we are very particular to see that this conflict doesn't come there. So, we would not disclose to anyone who is poor and who is uh, not, etc., etc. All are equal in our eyes. So, anyway, we are really, really very grateful for the help they got. They felt without uh, their living in the ashram, they would have missed a great thing in the life. So, by doing that, you feel a kind of joy. There is joy in doing, in giving, in sharing. So actually, the need of the people, the need of the world, is not so much on the material plane as on the moral and spiritual planes. We always think of the economic needs of others. If we provide people with economic help and don't take care of to improve them morally, the material help will not be of much benefit. It is simply delusion to think that once the economic problems are solved, all the problems of life will automatically be solved. No. No. We are anxious in our educational centers to teach our young people how to get into a good job, how to get good money, how to make money, how to get ahead in the world. Not much emphasis is placed on the development of moral life. So you find nowadays generation, how they are weak mentally, though physically they look strong, though they have got big moustaches, they are terribly weak inside. That's why you find many people, they collapse, they can't face any crisis. They, they become so intolerant because they have no philosophical basis. They don't know how to conduct themselves. That's the reason. So, what is happening is, the emphasis is put on the intellectual life. But in giving education, the emphasis should be first and foremost on the moral life. That is the first thing to be attended to, not on the intellectual life. The first priority is moral life, which we are neglecting so badly. Intellectual development does not solve the problems of life. It only makes man a clever animal, clever, an expert in exploiting his fellow beings. That's all. That only increases problems. Money does not bring wisdom. Intellectual development does not bring ethical insight. A person may have a very high order of intelligence. He may be a great philosopher or a great scientist or a lawyer. But if he doesn't live his life according to moral principles, he cannot have moral insight. He will not have wisdom. In spite of all this knowledge, that is ordinary knowledge, he will not have freedom. On the other hand, he will be a slave of his passions. He will be a slave of his propensities and he will be a slave of his prejudices. People nowadays are constantly being bothered by their prejudices, all sorts of prejudices. We see this happening in the case of so many people all over the world. Again and again, this point must be stressed. Never lose sight of the moral nature without elevating people morally, you can't solve any problem in life. The road to spirituality is blocked to persons who do not turn away from evil. You have to turn back from all the wrong 
things you have been doing this material life depends on people's moral nature if moral values are not stressed you cannot solve the problems of life simply by adjustment of economic conditions there are people who know the secret of amassing great wealth and we sometimes think all the problems are solved but are these persons really wise are they really free are they really happy the evidence says no we have seen the hindu view of the four ways of doing good to the world and their real importance has been found rescuing life is considered superior to supplying material needs giving intellectual knowledge is superior to the saving of life superior to all this is the giving of spiritual life spiritual help we think we can take care of the world without taking account of anything else if there be such a thing as a spirit we slip over the fact we feel we can very well take care of the world without bothering god about it why should we bring god but we have seen the necessity of moral values for the support and development of material life and intellectual life we have also seen that moral life is not secure without spiritual development we need spiritual development not only for eternal peace and absolute freedom and joy but also to make our moral life secure unless our moral life is secure our material life cannot hold its own it falls to pieces a person can help others materially as much as he wants but he should not forget that the greater necessity is to remove moral and spiritual poverty his own and others doing good to the world is all right but at the same time you must try to elevate yourself as much as you can if you forget your own nature you are a double loser so do good to the world but know that doing material good is not enough in itself there are higher forms of doing good there are grades of doing service remember this when you do social service remember that through this service you have to improve yourself it is a moral and spiritual exercise for you we come into this world for moral and spiritual exercise we can't bring about wholesale changes in the conditions of the world the suffering and enjoyments will continue and good and bad people will also continue to be in this world they all continue with all technological development with all increasing of universities and colleges all over the world still the good and bad they continue every moment someone or other is being born you don't know how many angels and how many devils are born each moment you can't improve the condition of humanity at large whatever you may do you can't bring them all to a certain state of development at the same time it's a continuous procession of good and bad people a panorama of pain and pleasure light and dark and such a pace of opposites it is just like a hospital new patients are continually coming into the hospital even as old patients are getting out or being cured a person is completely cured when he realizes his essential unity with god for this purpose human beings are born this is the supreme end of human life so this world is a gymnasium where you come for spiritual and moral training this is not your permanent home here you cannot find a perfect piece of home even so the wonder is we feel that there is not anything to seek beyond this and we take this life to be an end in itself we can't completely remove darkness delusion or want from this world but through effort we can bring about some improvement as a limited in a limited way on a limited scale our main effort must be to help others to develop themselves morally and spiritually that is we must lead them to spiritual development we can't do anything more than this so when you do good to the world you should not think you are bettering conditions you are in fact only bettering yourself 
and progressing in your moral and spiritual development. Instead of feeling that you are improving the condition of the world or that you must help God improve the world, instead of having this egoistic attitude, you should rather have the humility to admit, I am being helped. I am grateful to persons for receiving my help. I am least worried whether or not they are grateful to me. That's very important. In doing good to the world, work must be performed with a twofold attitude. On the one hand, you do good to people and on the other hand, you remove your own spiritual and moral poverty. Man's moral and spiritual poverty is much more severe than material poverty. At present, we don't think of this side of the problem. We think somehow or other, let us develop the undeveloped areas and somehow or other, let us supply the needs of people. We think like this because our whole attention is on material conditions. Economic problems receive our whole attention. We don't pay much attention to the attitude we should have when we help others. We don't consider whether or not we gain or lose anything because of our attitude service. There should be real altruism, that is, love for the fellow being whom we are serving. But this love for the fellow beings cannot be developed as long as a person has a sensuous outlook on life. When we think of our spiritual self, when we know that this spiritual self is united with the Supreme Self and that each and every self forms a part of the Supreme Self, then we feel spiritual relation with all. Then we cultivate unselfishness for the sake of unselfishness. Otherwise, we can't develop true selflessness. One common secure interest will spoil the whole life. We can't develop disinterested love for others. We have to go beyond all considerations of secular interests. When we realize our essential unity with the Supreme Being, that it is a supreme fact of experience, when we know this, the selflessness becomes a value in itself, apart from all conditions or secular interests. Only then can we do good to the world. Whatever we do, we must do with a two-fold view to improve the condition of the people and also with the idea of removing the moral and spiritual poverty of ourselves and of those whom we are serving. So, it is very important to develop morally and acquire spiritual knowledge. Let us give our attention to these aspects. Then see yourself the meaning of Peace and joy. Thank you. Om Sahana Bhavato Sahana Bhunakto Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejasvinavadhi Tamastoma Vidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsat May the Lord protect us. May He nourish us. May we work in harmony with great vigor. May our study be illuminating and fruitful. May we not hate each other. Om. Peace, peace, peace be unto all.